So here are the notes that start topic four, chapter four. Um, just a couple of basics before we get started. I'm going to run a different color today. Um, basic definitions here. The only one that I really want to spend any time talking about is this one. An electrolyte is any substance, any solution, I should say, um, any substance whose aqueous solution is capable of conducting electricity. And in order to conduct electricity, you have to have ions. If you don't separate into ions, you can't be an electrolyte. So strong electrolytes is any substance that as soon as you dissolve it in water, it completely separates into ions. So if we take like H2SO4, as soon as it hits water, it separates into a hydrogen ion and a hydrogen sulfate ion. This hydrogen sulfate ion, this little hydrogen right here, it'll ionize a little bit, but not enough that we would write it as, you know, two hydrogen ions and a sulfate ion. But these ions are what are going to conduct that electricity. And so whenever you write this, you write it with an arrow only going one direction, as opposed to the bidirectional arrow that you'll see in a second. Um, and so strong acids and strong bases do this. The majority of ionic compounds also do this. The exceptions are the ones that have the solubility rule saying they are insoluble or slightly soluble. So weak electrolytes, they only partly ionize like uh, weak acids and bases. So let's say we had um, hydrocyanic acid. That's going to ionize into hydrogen and a cyanate ion but it's only going to ionize partly. And so we would write a bidirectional arrow, or you could write your arrow like this, which is how I usually do it. Uh, it's mostly going to be going this direction, because in a solution of hydrocyanic acid, you're going to have the majority hydrogen cyanide particles with just a little bit of ionization in there. So that's not to say that they don't conduct electricity at all. It's just they don't do it very much. Uh, and then non-electrolytes is any substance that doesn't form an ion at all. And so like sugar, if you had, uh, let's say we had methanol, CH3OH. If you were to put this into water, mix it into water, it's not going to ionize into a methyl group. I guess this would be a, neg no, I guess that'd have to be a positive. And a hydroxide group. It's not going to do that. This is not going to happen. It's going to stay like that. It does not ionize, therefore it is not capable of conducting electricity. So classify each of these as strong, weak, or non. Remember, I'm just going to fly through these, so pause them, work them out on your own, and then um, hit play. So calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is an ionic compound, therefore it is a strong electrolyte that will separate into a calcium ion and two chlorine ions. Ammonium sulfate. This is a polyatomic ion. This is a polyatomic ion. Therefore, it is an ionic compound. Strong electrolyte that separates into two ammonium ions and a sulfate ion. Hydrocyanic acid. I actually just talked about that one. It is not one of your seven strong acids. Therefore, by default, it has to be a weak acid, making it a weak electrolyte. And so it only partly ionizes into hydrogens and cyanates. Glucose, it's a sugar, doesn't ionize at all. So it is a non-electrolyte and there is no reaction right afterwards. So a precipitation reaction is any reaction which you produce an insoluble solid. And so an example here, if you have lead nitrate, which is soluble, and sodium bromide, which is soluble, you'll produce the precipitate lead bromide, which is not soluble. Uh, I don't know what rule number it is. It depends on what list you're looking at. But it, uh, all halogens, which bromine is a halogen, all halogen compounds are soluble except the halogen compounds containing silver, mercury, or lead. Uh, and then sodium nitrate, extremely, extremely soluble. Pretty much any sodium containing compound is going to be soluble. So if the aqueous compounds are written as ions, spectator ions here can be crossed out. So anything that was written as aqueous is ionized. And so the two NO3s can be canceled out. The two NAs can be canceled out, leaving behind the only guys that actually do anything in a reaction. 
um, and that's the lead and the bromine ions that come together to form the solid lead bromide. So what are spectator, spectator ions? Well, they're any ion that doesn't actually really do anything in the chemical reaction except just sit there and watch it happen. The sodium, I'm sorry, the sodium ion went from reactants to products and didn't change at all. Um, so when it comes to predicting what precipitate you're going to have, you've got to know those solubility rules. It's on page 150 in the Zoom doll chemistry book. Um, and like I said, in any chemistry book you have, you'll find the solubility rules in there somewhere. And if a compound is written as being insoluble or slightly soluble, that means you are going to write it as a precipitate with a little s after it. So any compound that is soluble is written as aqueous and it will be ionized if it is an ionizable compound. So the steps to writing net ionic equations, write all the reactants and then put the little um, states after them and then rewrite the formulas of the aqueous compounds as the ions, predict and write your products, balance your masses and your charges using the coefficients, and then finally cross out your spectator ions. So all we have left are three lovely little practice equations. I'm going to work through them really fast, so make sure you hit pause and work at your own pace. Um, and if you have questions after this or need to see any more, I actually think I've got, I know, I know I've got another two net ionic practice videos in my pre-AP section. So, let's go. Aqueous solutions of silver nitrate and sodium phosphate are mixed. Well, silver nitrate, AgNO3, sodium phosphate, Na3PO4. Mix those. You're going to have a nice little double replacement reaction, which one product is going to be NaNO3. Figure out what its state is. And then ag 3 PO4. Figure out what its state is. So looking at this guy, we know this said it was aqueous, so we know both of these guys is aqueous. Sorry, I didn't write them in there. Looking at this, sodium nitrate. You see sodium, that means soluble. You see nitrate, that means even more soluble. So we're going to go ahead and put aqueous here. Silver phosphate, if you look at your rules, you'll see that most phosphates are insoluble. So this is going to be our precipitate. So we ionize everything that's aqueous. If it's a solid, liquid, or gas, we're going to keep it together. Um, actually, we can balance this guy first. Let's do that real quick. Plop three there. Three there. That ought to do it. Yeah. So we got three silvers ions, three nitrate ions, three sodium ions, and one phosphate ion giving way to, this is aqueous, so it's going to separate, three sodium ions, three nitrate ions, plus the solid, meaning it stays together, Ag3PO4. Cross out your spectator ions. So the silver ion, no silver ion over here, so not a spectator. Three nitrates, three nitrates, though they, these guys go away. Three sodiums, three sodiums, gone. And a phosphate ion, no phosphate ion, it's in a compound. So there, our net ionic reaction is going to be three silver ions plus one phosphate ion gives us the insoluble compound, precipitate, Ag3PO4 solid. Okay, aqueous copper 2 sulfate added a solid sodium carbonate. So copper 2 sulfate formula is... CuSO4, and that's aqueous because the question said. Uh, and then the question also said that so sodium carbonate, Na2CO3 solid, it's a solid. Again, double replacement reaction, so I always swap metals just because it's easier. And it's not necessarily easier, it's just that's what I choose to do. So sodium, when it bonds to sulfate, is going to be Na2SO4, parentheses. Figure out what that one is. Uh, and then the copper carbonate, CuCO3, figure out what that one's going to be. Looking at this one, I see a sodium. That means soluble. Looking at this one, I see copper, I see carbonate. I'm going to think back through my solubility rules and remember that most carbonates are not soluble. So there we go. <clears throat> Whoa, I don't know why I wrote a solid there. My bad, that's what I get when I try to write too fast. So now anything that's aqueous to separate, anything that's a solid, liquid, or gas, I'm going to keep together. So copper, 2 plus. Sulfate, 2 minus. Whoa, that's a minus. 
Sodium carbonate, it's a solid, so it stays together. Na2CO3. Solid. Sorry. Uh, aqueous here, so 2Na plus, plus an SO4, 2 minus. Plus, this guy is a solid, so he stays together. If you notice, I never really write the aqueous AQ parentheses after my ions because the fact that I'm writing them as ions in, er, indicates that it is an aqueous uh, compound. It is occurring in an aqueous solution, so I, it's just not, it takes up too much space. So cross out my spectators. Looks like the only one I got is sulfate. Rewrite the net ionic copper ion. Sodium carbonate gives me sodium ion and copper carbonate solid. And remember on the number four, free response question on the AP exam, this is all you're going to submit. All this work that you did up here, the people who grade this thing are never going to see that. You don't put that in your box on number four. You only put the net ionic. All right, last equation that we're going to work through. We take hydrogen chloride gas. We bubble it up through some lead nitrate. So hydrogen chloride gas bubbled through an aqueous solution of lead nitrate is going to give us lead chloride and looks like nitric acid. Balance this guy. Looks like I need a two there. Two there. Now, looking at my solubility rules, I immediately recognize nitric acid as a strong acid, so that means it is aqueous. The lead chloride, every halogen compound is soluble except silver, mercury, and lead. So that means silver chloride, or sorry, lead chloride is a solid. Break apart my aqueouses, keep my solids, liquids, and gases together. So my HCl stays together because it was a gas. My lead nitrate falls apart because it is aqueous. Gives me lead chloride solid. And my nitric acid, that falls apart. Cross out my spectators. Looks like nitrate's the only one. Rewrite my net ionic equation. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions or need any additional help, you can either watch the other net ionic videos or come in, and I'll be more than happy to help you with anything I can. Y'all have a great weekend.